like a hell cut. Hello friends, today our topic is DFT. So basically DFT means discrete Fourier transform. So what happens in this? We have x of n. So basically x of n is given in the question. Then we have to find capital X of k. This is finding discrete Fourier transform of small x of n. What if the condition is reverse? This is inverse discrete Fourier transform. So in inverse discrete Fourier transform means we have capital X of k and we have to find small x of n. So what is the formula for that? So the formula is we have small x of n and we have to find capital X of k. So in LHS we have to write capital X of k because we have to find that. And the formula is summation of n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 we have to use small x of n because this is given in the question into e raised to minus j times 2 pi k small n by capital N alright so what are the terms basically we have terms k small n and capital N now k ranges from 0 to capital N minus 1 similarly n also ranges from 0 to capital N minus 1 so this is the formula to find DFT of any function either x of n or it can be h of n or it can be y of n so let's see some examples so let's see the first type of question so the first question is small x of n is equal to a raised to n u of n and where n ranges between 0 to n minus 1 now the question is to find DFT of small x of n so now we know that DFT means this we have to find and the formula is summation n is equal to 0 to n minus 1 x of n into e raised to minus j 2 pi k n by n. Alright. Now x of n is a raised to n u of n. u of n means the graph will start from 0. So the limits are right. We have start the graph from 0. 0 to n minus 1. Now x of n is now a raised to n. So Let's take small n common from both. So a into e raised to minus j 2 pi k by n and small n is common from both. Why I have taken this small n common? Because the formula is and you should be aware of that summation of when the range is between n1 to n2 and see some constant raised to n then this formula is c raised to n1 minus c raised to n2 plus 1 upon 1 minus c. So this is the important formula to solve this question. Now the, just apply. You can see that n1 is 0, n2 is n minus 1, c is basically the whole bracket inside term. Alright. So our answer is capital X of k is equal to. Now see c raised to n1 something raised to 0 because n1 is 0 something raised to 0 is always 1 minus c raised to n2 plus 1 so first write c c is a into e raised to minus j 2 pi k by n now n2 plus 1 is what is n2 n minus 1 so n minus 1 plus 1 all right then we have 1 minus again the bracket now what is the next step next step is to simplify it to simplify it, let's just do it here. Minus 1 plus 1, gone. Now capital N, it will go for both terms. So this is gone. Now capital N gets cancelled in e raised to power terms. Alright. Now we have e raised to minus j 2 pi k. Alright. e raised to minus j 2 pi k, if we consider k is integer then according to Euler identity this term is equal to 1 ok now this means numerator has become 1 minus a raised to n upon 1 minus the bracket and the bracket is a into e raised to minus j 2 pi k 
all right now 2 pi k by m so this is our answer now the second question is x of n is equal to 1 1 2 2 3 3 and find the dft of that so the first step is we have to find the terms all right the terms are n k and capital n now you can see n starts from 0 and it goes to 1 2 3 4 5 so n goes from 0 to 5 so k will also be the same 0 to 5 now if you remember n ranges from 0 to n minus 1 so if n minus 1 is equal to 5 what is n n is 6 therefore n is 6 okay now just apply the formula capital x of k is summation small n is equal to 0 to 5 now x of n e raised to minus j 2 pi k small n by capital n now just substitute the value of n n is 0 first so x of 0 is 1 1 into e raised to minus j 2 pi k by n plus x of 1 x of 1 is also 1 into e raised to minus j 2 pi k here also we have to put 1 so this is the answer plus just plug in the values 2 into e raised to minus j 2 pi k 2 by n and so on till last term and the last term is 3 into e raised to minus j 2 pi k 3 by n so this is capital x of k now if we have to find the sequence then we can put the value of k as well because k also ranges from 0 to 5 all right so you can find x of 0 x of 1 and so on up to x of 5 so let's find x of 0 first so we have this sequence all right now what if all terms of k is 0 so e raised to 0 here it will be e raised to 0 similarly here it will be e raised to 0 that is we will have only x small x of 0 plus small x of 1 means the all these coefficients and they were this just we have to add them up to x of 5 this means that 1 plus 1 plus 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus 3 so the answer is 12 Similarly, we have to find for the others and the final answer is capital X of K is equal to 12,3.17 I am just writing the coefficient so let's say first I will write the magnitude and then I will write the angle so the magnitudes are this 3.1417 2.640, 2.64, and the angles are so the respective angle 12 here it is only constant so and here it is angle of minus 69.08 angle 79.110 79.11 degrees and angle of minus 60 46.0 12 degrees so this is the answer so how will the graph look like for if we talk about magnitude in x axis we have k in y axis we have magnitude of x of k all right so at 0 we have 12 so this line at 1 we have 3.17 at 2 we have 2.64 at 3 we have 0 and so on similarly for angle we can plot angle of x of k at 0 we have 0 at 1 we have minus 69.08 degrees at 3 we have 79.11 so at 1 2 so 0 we have 0 at 1 we have minus 69.08 degrees at 2 we have 79.11 degrees at 3 we have 0 and so on so this is magnitude plot and this is phase plot so friends agar aapko meri video pasand aa rahi ho then do like this video share with your friends and subscribe to my youtube channel
तो मिलते हैं अगली वीडियो में टिल देन टेक केयर दिस इज ट्रेनिंग जैन पीस आउट